beep, beep. Today I'm in the middle of New York City's Chinatown. I'm one of the largest restaurants in the country, and I'm learning how to make and serve dim sum. Enjoy your meal. Thank you. <laughs> what is that, a fan around your neck? I know you work very hard. Let me put a high fan for you. Yeah, high fan. Oh, goodness. And keep some light. Yo, hey, what you know about that? We're on Elizabeth Street in Chinatown, which is by far one of my favorite neighborhoods in New York. I'm standing in front of Jin Fung, which is an 800 seat dim sum restaurant. It's one of the largest restaurants in North America, and I'm about to learn the art of dumpling making. I can't really think of too many restaurants that have escalators in New York. This is like a escalator at Grand Central. This is huge. I don't know if I've ever seen a dining room this big in New York City. Well, thank you for having me. So what's your role here? I do a little bit of everything. I help with mostly the back of house operation kind of stuff. It gets crazy out here? Yeah, it can get a little crazy. What is Jing Fong in your words? How would you describe it? My grandfather started it in 1978. I think it's a traditional Cantonese, Hong Kong style banquet hall. This is literally one of the biggest restaurants in the country. What are some of the metrics here? Well, first off, we probably have 150 to 180 employees at any given time. The entire restaurant is about like 25, 26,000 square feet. The dining room itself is like 15,000 square feet ish. I look for 1,500 square feet places. <laughs> On a busy Sunday, we'll probably get over 3,000 customers. That's insane. Yeah. You know, we, we do tremendous volume, so like everything here is basically done by hand. How many different types of dim sum? On the menu, they can probably make like 200 different items. But at any given time on the dining room, you'll probably see like 100. On like the weekends, you might see like 150. We do all the dim sum on this side. We probably have like 20 dim sum staff. So they're making barbecue roast pork buns right now. What do they do? They get stacked in these, in these yeah, trays? so like... these guys make the dumplings. Those guys in the back steam it. There's multiple stations, right? Like just like any other restaurant. Right. They got the steamers, the fryers. They got the guys in the back cooking the, the filling. And then these guys are the ones that are actually forming yeah. the dumplings. Yeah. These guys here look like they're seasoned pros. Man, nice Frank. to meet you. Nice Thank you for having me. Give some okay. Chef Jun. Nice yeah. to meet you, Chef Jun. Yeah. He's going to teach you some things, and here's an apron for you. I get the apron too? Yeah. How long have you been working here? What makes a good dumpling? Okay. Uh, right, right, right. More gentle. Yeah. Uh, All right, so where are the pizza ovens? <laughs> oh, you have a deck oven over there. All right, I'm starting to feel like home now. Which ones are we making right now? Mm -hmm. Mine aren't looking as good as this. This is a very good place. That one wasn't as good. Okay. My dumplings are not looking nearly as pretty as these guys' dumplings. It's like that muscle memory that's very reminiscent of making pizza. Once you get it down, after you make a lot, you get to do it quicker and quicker and quicker, and you get really good like he is. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good, good. All right. Right about now, you can start to feel the sweat like really dripping down, you know? But this is when you get into your groove, you're working, you're not thinking about that, you're just doing what you gotta do. Yeah. We cannot jam him up. Now I'm a man on a mission. I want to get this right. From a scale from 1 to 10, what would you say that my first round is? Oh, this Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'll take that. 
How long does it take to master making a dumpling like this? You're a dumpling master, huh? So if I wasn't here and you were just doing them, what does it look like? Right there. Wow, look at that. Look at that. This guy right here. He has many years of experience doing dumplings. He started in the 90s and he does somewhere like 2 million dumplings a year. Now that I learned a little bit about the technique of making the dumplings, you think I'll be able to see how they're steamed? Yeah. All right, beautiful. Right on top. You get to put the crown on top. So four to five minutes, we can fit at least eight of those bamboo containers into a steamer. So we could do numbers here, these dumplings. We could really do a lot. I'm getting the sign that these dumplings are ready. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Mm. This is extremely flavorful. That was good. I tried mine. I'm gonna try one of his now. See what the difference is. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. It was filled properly. The ratio was right. You could taste the filling and you could taste the dough. I think that's the ideal dumpling that he was talking about. Dim sum is not just dumplings. You also order fried rice, noodles with it. So dim sum is not just like the carts being pushed around. It's more of a meal period or a, or a style of eating. Yeah, that, that's how I think about it. What is the actual meaning of dim sum? Dim is basically like a touch uh -huh. and sum is like the heart. The literal translation is like touch the heart. Touch the heart, right, yeah. right, right, right. Warm the heart, yeah. touch the heart. I got my eye on one of these little coconut rabbits over here. Mm. Coconutty, cold. Sweet, everything you want in a little fake rabbit. <laughs> I think it's almost time for me to get my hands dirty. We could do that, let's go. So the way that these banquet kitchens work is when an order comes in, these guys over here, they chop all the stuff up, and these guys on the other side of the line, they cook it. So these are like the expediters standing here, and then the food comes back to the middle on cars and then goes right out. Ah, smart. Uh, about to work the walk with the head chef over here on the banquet side. What are we gonna make here today? It's so fun. How long have you been working in this restaurant? I've been working for 20 years. I've been working for the first four years. Okay, so a little bit of oil. We're now going to put the oil in the oil. We're going to put the oil in the oil. Then the sprouts. Yeah, put the oil in the oil. Onions. Put the oil in the oil. Just, he's a master with the wok. A little bit of sugar. Yeah, little bit of sugar. You can't get flavor out of a dish like this without cooking it in a wok like this. Just the seasoning of the wok alone. That was unreal. That whole meal must have been cooked in three minutes. I'm gonna try to jump in and see what we got. The temperature on this thing is like a fucking jet engine. A lot could go wrong when you're cooking with this thing. All right, we ready, Chef? Yep. Okay. So we're gonna let this meat cook a little bit. The wok is heavy, the oil's hot, it splashes up on you. Okay, a little bit of water? No. no? Let's turn this back up. You can see how powerful this thing is. Like I said, it looks like a jet engine. Now that we have that in, a little bit of sugar? Yeah. <laughs> this is a part that's not so easy as it looks. I don't got that lefty forearm strength like I should. <laughs> it's heavy, the walk is heavy. You can tell after years of practice, he has built up the strength in both arms to kind of work it and lift up the walk at the same time. I gotta switch back to my right hand for me to lift this thing up and get a little bit of a flip. Oh, my okay. You gotta work quick or else you'll burn the shit out of everything in this thing. Then we turn down the heat and we I think we might have made it out all right. I gotta get that 
Wrist action. Thank you, chef. How did I do? Good? Yeah, good. I see your arms are very strong to pick up that walk. Because I got to do a lot. A little bit burnt. Yeah. Oh, that's good. That's good. It might look similar, but it's night and day. His has a more refined taste to it. All the flavors kind of really come together. Really excellent. That was a fun experience. In culinary school, I had a short time to work on a wok. Being here on the line in a real Chinese kitchen and understanding how these guys have to make so many different dishes and kind of keep up with the pace. It's a whole different ball game. On a busy night, when these guys have a wedding going on or a big banquet, he'll make 800 of these dishes. It's a different league, and it shows a lot of respect that I have for guys like this. Thank you very Thank much, you. Chef. I appreciate you. Let's you get back to work. I learned how to make dumplings. I learned how to use the wok with a master. Now, how does that food get to the customer? So we have some shrimp noodle rolls. We're about to roll these into the dumb waiter. Send it upstairs, and then the front of the house staff is going to bring it out to all the customers. This is the way the food gets from the kitchen here to the dining room. Perfect fit. Put this in and press two. Oh, one more. Okay. Thank you. She's the boss of the elevator system. She knows which one is open, which one is working. She just directed me to the right. So we have some shumai right now. There we go. Second door, and send it up. Hi, how are you? Hello, Tony. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for having me today. You gonna wear this uh, uniform? Wow. wow. Look at this. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> and also, this is the kind of the hygiene of your for the. the of the course, hair. of okay. course. How do I look? Looking great. Looking great? Yeah, right. So we have a lot of different items. Shrimp dumpling. And how do you say that? Ha gao. The ha gao. And also, this is no leaf crab meat dumpling. Crystal shrimp dumpling. Crystal shrimp dumpling, and that has the little peas inside. Exactly. So this is uh, snow pea leaf, one more time. But not with crab meat, with the shrimp in it. I'm going to teach you. Maybe you have a little skill to sell your product. OK, let's go. You're let's go. Follow. Let's okay. go. I hope I have some okay. skills. So I'll follow you. Can I offer you anything? Uh, we have shrimp dumplings. We have the snow pea and crab dumplings. The shrimp and pea dumplings. We also have the snow pea and shrimp dumplings. <laughs> shrimp dumplings it is. Let's do the, uh, the snow pea too. We'll do one snow pea with the crab. I'll pour a little soy sauce. I'll put a little bit of soy sauce in here. OK. This is the kind of sauce, you know, from our chef, make a little, you know, secret in it. Even me, I don't know what is the secret inside. But I would like the people, you know, taste it and then you feel it. You're going to enjoy it, OK? This guy okay. is good. This guy is good. But you have good memory. The way I teach you, by the way, you can repeat oh, what exactly the one. You're a good teacher. Hey guys, how was everything? Great. Great. Can I offer you any more? How was it? You're all good today? I hope you enjoyed your meal. Yeah, okay. Just relax, you know, don't get nervous. Just do things like a normal. Hey, how are you today? Good. Can I offer you some shrimp dumplings? Yes, sir. Enjoy your meal. Okay. I think What's up, big guy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm getting the hang of it now. Can I offer you any dim sum? They're okay? One shrimp dumpling? You got it. Thanks, guys. You're making me look good. <laughs> Just some of the best dim sum in America. What can I get you today? He's full? All right, enjoy the rest of your meal. Hello, how are you? Shrimp? One shrimp, enjoy your meal. My manager's gonna give me a raise. Yeah, he's smart, you know. One way a teacher, he remember everything. I like that. <laughs> That's it. Who's our next victim? No. <laughs> I'm satisfaction is on your sales person. Yeah. yeah, very good. Thank you very much. 
Are a lot of like your staff here from China? Uh, we don't really have any American-born Chinese here. This is their job, obviously. You know, this is where they uh, work. This is their income. Do they live in the neighborhood too? A lot of them live in Brooklyn and Queens area. I bet you some people in that kitchen live in my neighborhood. I'm from Bensonhurst, and oh yeah, you know, my sure. neighborhood has seen. It was it was Hasidic Jewish when the Italians moved in, and then it changed to kind of Eastern European and Italian, and now it's 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 very Chinese. The one thing that I love about it is like the Italians always gardened a lot, and the Chinese are also like expert gardeners. You know, like in my grandmother's backyard, the Chinese family, I noticed that they were growing all the Italian vegetables, the gaguzza, the green zucchini, and she brought us over these these three big zucchinis, which my aunt was like flipping out because. We didn't have any growing at that point. Both of my grandparents have now passed away, but our Chinese neighbors are growing Italian vegetables <laughs> and they sharing them back with us. I thought that that was like a really cool mix of communities coming together. To have a place like this that represents Chinese culture, dim sum culture so well, it's so special that it's here. What I've been waiting to try this whole time is these delicious, gelatinous chicken feet. But there's a lot of parallels between even what I do and what's done here. Being in those hot kitchens with the steam kind of coming up and the woks really hot, just like the pizza ovens. This isn't a place to just come and get fed. It's a place to sit down and engage in community culture. And it's very familiar to me. Uh, just like the pizzerias. I got the opportunity today to work with some great guys in the kitchen, work with some great people in the front of the house, and learn how an operation like this actually works. And I had a lot of fun doing it.